Well, it's that time to do a thousand round review of the SAR CM9 Gen 2. Now, first off, I did get this uh, pistol from TR Imports. It was one of the last ones uh, from when they liquidated their stock uh, to CDNN. So, of course, you have <clears throat> the way they spell turkey. It's pronounced Turkai. I don't think we're going to start... Uh, you know, pronouncing things the way the Turks do because they pronounce things differently, especially when they cross over to English. So anyways, you know, those people that like saying Janik, you know, I, I've already got a video about that, but as you can see, TR imports. So if you get one of these pistols, just so you know, um, they're now being imported exclusively from by SAR USA, but TR imports will honor the warranty, and if you do register it, you will get an extended warranty. So, uh, that's just information I wanted to pass along real quick. Now, for the thousand round review, I want to go ahead and start off by talking about this grip. Now, this grip, it, pretty much every review has noted that this grip, uh, compared to the K2P, which is kind of like a, 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 a Tanfoglio uh, a kind of copy, I, I guess they worked with them a little bit, but I guess they wanted to go and do their own thing, so they came up with the CM9 Gen 2. Because the original, the K2P is actually uh, labeled as the CM9 from Sarsalmaz, but I guess TR Imports had another idea for labeling it. But anyways, um, uh, with this grip, them going on their own and doing their own thing is, you know, it's whatever. I, I don't know what the actual intention was for this pistol. I can't get a clear answer, so I apologize for that. But uh, the, the grip, it has interchangeable back straps. I'm sure that was a big thing, and the Turks are starting to catch up with the uh, shooting market, the professional and civilian shooting market, how we want pretty much the same thing. And uh, <clears throat> this pistol's uh, grip is just... I, I, I hate it. I, I hate the, the fact that it is so slick. Uh, this is like fingerprints, almost. like It looks like random fingerprints on here, and I don't know if they copied a piece of Play-Doh that they had 10 people... Uh, grip or whatever, but it, it sucks. The only thing that's holding your um, hand on is these finger grooves. I mean, all they had to do was do some mild, um, more mild texture right here. Leave the sides as they are. Leave the back strap as it is even, but just put some damn texturing right here. Like, I would recommend just doing a strip of skateboard tape here, here, and, and I would leave this one a blank. But really, if you're wearing gloves, you know, disregard. It, it, it works great with gloves, especially first tacticals, uh, uh, duty gloves. I love the first tactical duty gloves. They grip pretty much everything real good, and they're very thin, so you don't have to worry about getting in the trigger guard or anything like that. So that guy kind of segues me into talking about the controls and the trigger guard. So basically, when you're using this pistol, how the controls have anything to do with this is you can put the safety on and it locks up everything if the hammer's forward or even at half cock, it'll lock everything uh, everything up. The slide will try to move back, but it's locked up by the hammer. Now, if you're at full cock, obviously you can have the safety on and you can work the action. So here's the thing. I worked the hell out of this safety to try to get it smooth, and now I regret that. The reason is because I would be using this um, in the half cock when I uh, load this pistol, and if I wanted to use it for, say, a nightstand gun or a, a, a vehicle gun or whatever, I would just leave it at that. And I think the trigger pull is absolutely just fine in that in this configuration. A lot of people... They fire two or three hundred rounds through the damn gun, and then they uh, comment about the trigger pull on double action, how it stacks a little bit at the end here. And it does stack a little bit, even after a thousand rounds, but it's so mild that when you're actually uh, going through the trigger pull, like, uh, and actually pulling it, you actually don't notice it. It's not that friggin' bad. But here's the thing. On single action, a lot of people have noted as I did in one of my initial videos that it glides and then it can kind of be gritty all the way through. Now there's a lot of friction points on the inside of here so I guess we're segueing to the trigger. But anyways, you've got this little point in here that uh, I talked about in my first video. You can see that piece moving. It's a pretty thick piece and you can see as I pull the trigger it goes boom and it, it goes up a bit and it uh, kind of goes up in little intervals like uh, about twice. So anyways, I, I guess to go back to controls, the magazine release, after you work with it just a little bit, it works just fine. MC28 magazines, if you got the MC28 from Zenith, 
and uh, you know CZ75 magazines most of them work I got Metgar 17 rounders from cheaper than dirt it was basically the best price plus shipping so uh, that's a thing but they do sell them uh, they do sell magazines on CDNN uh, they're not really that great of a price compared to cheaper than dirt it's only a couple dollars difference but still now let's go ahead and move on to the site so uh, basically these sites are adjustable mine were right on uh, out of the box now <clears throat> Um, a lot of people uh, don't like that uh, this has a short sight radius because we got a 3.8 inch barrel. It's very. This is almost like a PO7, uh, the CZ PO7, but except you have a full size uh, grip, which is fine. This is meant to be a kind of a duty gun and you know civilian gun. Popular setup for a duty gun is a shorter barrel and a full size grip, kind of the to take out of the holster. Theoretically, it helps you take it out of the holster. I don't see what a quarter or a half inch really uh, does. I don't see how that's going to be that much of a vast improvement. But anyways, that's just my take on it. But you can see the sights. It's right here. It's damn near halfway. And it, it doesn't go back necessarily all the way. But you can see it's kind of cut out here. And it doesn't you don't really lose that much in the sight radius or whatever the accuracy but people are going to complain about it but i do like that they have a little bit of a shelf here if anybody has used a, a pistol for duty or gotten training in that you do typically uh use the uh the sight for one-handed manipulations that's just how it is they they train you to be able to do do these functions while wounded and you need something to help you the front sight is, you know, the way it is, so you don't really have that much of a contact surface if you had to use that. But anyways, I wouldn't want to muzzle myself or risk muzzling myself when I'm racking this off a belt or a boot or whatever. But anyways, <clears throat> kind of go back to the controls. Uh, I would not use the safety damn near at all. I wouldn't glue it in position because you would need to take it out and, uh, you know, it. you'd have to take it out to disassemble the internals and you need to punch out that pin, take it out. Whatever, so this is kind of a scattered review, so I apologize. The slide serrations are really good on this pistol after working with it a lot. A lot of people bitch about CZ designs and how you can't get a full grip on that, but I actually noticed that I can get a very good grip on it, even with the safeties being the way they are. They don't really get in the way of me being able to rack the pistol. Of course, you have front slide serrations, and it's a very interesting pattern, kind of a separation from the K2P, as everybody knows, or the original CM9. So anyways, you also notice damn near the same texture, the same pattern at least, right here. So that's kind of like a finger reference. Uh, those people that know about the PO7, they did the same thing. They have a little bit of a finger reference right there. So anyways, as far as the slide release is concerned, this is made to be a slide release. It is, all, it is pretty... Uh, it's, it extends a good amount. The safety is kind of far away for me to be able to competently use it, even though it's really easy to take off now, so I couldn't carry this cocked and locked. But when you're loading a magazine, this is very easy to find, and it's very uh, it, it's not really easy to take off, but it, it works exactly like it's supposed to. It gives you a good amount of resistance, and you have to be sure that you're trying to release it. Only a couple of times have I been able to insert a magazine really fast and set the slide home. It only happened a couple of times, but... Anyways, the next thing I want to do is break down this pistol and talk about the internals. As far as disassembly is concerned, I want to go ahead and note here that, of course, you line these dots up, but I'm going to go ahead and cover this. But I can actually push this out with my index finger at this point, and it's not going to be something you're going to be able to do right away. But as you can see, this is a pretty beefy uh, slide release. Now we'll go ahead and take off the top here. Of course, you don't have to do cock it, do anything like that. It comes off pretty smooth. Now, as far as you know, the spring system, double cat, double recoil spring system, you know, two springs. The smaller one is your recoil spring, kind of to soften it up as it's coming back. It is shorter than this standard spring uh, right here. This is your return spring. So this is the main function of this is to get your slide to go back home. So uh, one thing to note is uh, when consulting uh, TR Imports and SAR USA, this spring is actually compatible with things like the CC75 Compact or PCR if you want to find that. Or if you want to get a, like a DPM spring, I would love it if I could get a DPM spring to test. They're just expensive. So anyways, I might invest in that in the future. I really like this gun just kind of 
jumping ahead a little bit. So as far as the barrel is concerned, Sarsamaz, if you go to their original website, I'll link it down in the description below, they talk about their rifles, how they're using the most updated machining, and they really invest in CNC machines, but um, they you, they still do button rifling. A lot of manufacturers, if, if you're, they're doing a lot of mass production, they want to invest in cold, uh, cold forging. Uh, for their uh, barrels. You don't really lose accuracy by going with a cut rifle, uh, cut rifled or button rifled or even cold forged. It's just cold forged. If you're going to be doing a shitload of production, it will save you costs. Now, one of the things I um, did notice here is you got machining marks on all the areas where there's not um, constant friction. This is supposedly chrome plated and the, uh, the finish it really doesn't wear much. It is incredibly slick, and you damn near don't need any lubricant at all to help it along. Now, the crown is one of the areas that I noticed it was very unfinished, and it was just ugly. And you know, it, it's not really uh, coming up on here, so I'll just go ahead and put it put a picture in. And as you saw, it's just really ugly, and it still is. Okay, so now it's. Uh, it's showing up a little bit, but I think the picture actually shows a little bit better. But anyways, this is a very good barrel. It's very solid, very uh, very thick. It's basically the same as the K2P, if I remember correctly. And I'm going to call it the K2P because people know it as the K2P, but I guess I could just say the first generation. Now, these are MIM parts, just kind of the standard for uh, CZs. Of course, uh, like the PO7, you have the metal rails. This is actually connected to this block right here. And uh, this is basically where, as you know, this little uh, piece goes in here, and it, it's where the barrel cams off. So, anyways, uh, one thing I wanted to show as far as, like, the intersection where these two uh, meet, this, the slide release and the slide, you can see that this is a very, um, a very nice uh, contact point right in here. There we go, so the camera will focus. You can see that it's almost actually pointed forwards a little bit, and that resists a lot of wear, and that's really good. That's something I really like to see. Now, as far as the finish on this slide, um, it, I believe it's just basically a black oxide paint. I don't think it's a black oxide chrome, uh, but basically, I believe this is stainless, if I remember correctly. I, I don't think it really matters. It's just a very beefy uh, hunk of steel, uh, whatever it is. But uh, generally, you know, this is uh, this is a very tough, uh, tough slide. So I don't think you're really going to have to worry about cracking if you're really going to use this seriously. And uh, kind of to jump ahead now, um, would I actually consider this pistol? Uh, yes, I would. Now, the, the big downside that I wanted to save for last is the fact that... Uh, <clears throat> Accessories, you're not going to be getting night sights for this. Sarsalmaz, I, I think, was it was an asshole move uh, to basically make these sights uh, to where they're unique. The cuts are unique, so this kind of comes off like a PO7, PO9, and this uh, this is kind of unique. It's doing its own thing. But even if you were able to get night sights, you would have to have it in the same configuration. Really push back, maybe a Novak or something like that. But it, it would just look like crap, and you would lose an incredible amount of. Uh, you know, basically sight radius. I mean, you're looking at that much. That will actually make somewhat of a difference. So basically, yes, I would uh, consider this a uh, pistol for maybe like a vehicle gun or uh, something like that. I would uh, say that it is going to stand the test of time. And I do like that at least most of the parts are compatible with other designs like the uh, CC75 uh, Compact. And this is an MC28 magazine. So anyways... I, I do like that the uh, the pistol has parts that are compatible, so you can keep it running. And I don't really foresee any of the springs really needing a replacement back here for a while. So, you know, this is a gun that uh, comes in at about $300. I got this for like $250 on CDNNSports.com. Uh, so uh, this is a very, I guess a lot of people would call it budget-minded pistol. But if it's a good value, why not invest in it? That's just uh, really my take on it. But anyways, you know, those are just my criticisms of, of this pistol. And, uh, you know, some of my, some of the things I like to brag about at a thousand rounds. I only covered points that really uh, I, I noticed and needed touching on. I don't really care about the rail. I'm not really going to put a, a 
I don't really care if it uh, takes a light or laser at this point. Uh, if I uh, start using one, I will thoroughly test it, but that's not really a concern right now. It's just seeing how it works at about a thousand rounds. But anyways, the recoil, it, it's very light and it, it, you do notice a change when you start firing plus P, but still you're able to get this on target despite uh, despite the fact that you know the, the grip sucks. Now, uh, you've probably seen other reviews where people are really hammering rounds. That's because this is so easy to manage. It's got a full-size grip, and though the barrel length is you know, shorter, it doesn't really take away from the ability to handle this pistol and keep it on target and put accurate hits on target. So I really appreciate the quality of manufacturing uh, that Sarsal Moss has. And of course, there's shortcuts in areas where they they don't need to spend a lot of money. They're not really the biggest uh, as far as producers, uh, as far as like numbers of individual pistols, but they do make a lot of guns. But anyways, that's just uh, my review after a thousand rounds. I would invest in this pistol. I think it's just fine. Uh, I definitely look forward to uh, SAR USA getting you know up and running on getting parts available for us and stuff like that so we can just buy them outright. But uh, I, I would invest in a new uh, a trigger spring, I guess you could say, or a sear spring. And uh, you'll have to, you'll probably want to keep a hammer spring around because it's got that tiny spring in there that gives it tension. It doesn't run all the way back. You know, it's just a pistol that uh, I think could actually be used despite the fact that there's not really holsters unless you want to get a custom holster. A local, I'm sure you guys have local guys, uh, local people that can make holsters or, or what have you. But uh, as last I heard, Klinger Holsters is actually considering making holsters for this pistol. So I'm looking forward to that and I will definitely test that when they come out and I'll just go ahead and invest in one. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I know this has been a long drawn out video, but there's been a lot to say. So anyways, you guys have a good one. Leave a comment below and uh, check in on my blog at doitright.org. I'll link that down below in all my social media and I'm going to be doing updates as, you know, as they're needed.